everything about this series screams it should be right up my alley. But I'm still not feeling it so much. In fact, by the halfway point of tonight's episode, I was bored. Welcome to the heart of the stories we tell. My name is Rob, and tonight I will be reviewing... Episode 2 of Midnight Texas, Bad Moon Rising. And there's a bathroom on the right. What, those aren't the right words? Are you sure? Okay. Anyway, so the episode started off pretty strong and had some good ideas, and I still see a lot of potential here. But as the episode just went on and on, I felt like, I don't know, there was just something wrong. So once again, it's stop. Spoiler time. Bah, da, na, na. Let me give you an example of one of their good twists. They have an angel, and the angel wants to protect people. But the angel's gay, and the angel obviously has something that people are worried about seeing him flying around. You know what? It's a good take on the trope, especially with the fact that he still totally acts like a guardian angel. I like it. Two thumbs up. Actor's doing fine. He's not blowing it out of the park, but he's doing good. It's passable. And the other characters around him when they interact with him are pretty good, too. Another great twist, although one that I felt fell flat, was the Rev. They totally led you to believe that he was a werewolf. And of course, he is a were-creature, he is a lycanthrop, he's just a were-tiger. Although I kind of felt that was kind of ho-hum, it could have been done better. It wasn't bad, though. The way he was let free, though, was like bad cliche horror movie writing 101. Oh, the cop who was suspended is still investigating and is going to open the door where she can hear some sort of wild... I mean, I'm going to think for a second. Even if it was just a wild dog in there, just a wild dog, just a Doverman pincher that was likely to attack, how dangerous would it be? And what cop in their right mind opens that door without thinking? The character that dies, though, was kind of an interesting take. She was a minority and was actually pretty prejudiced against the supernaturals. That could have maybe gone somewhere, but I don't know. This whole, ooh, we don't trust Midnight Texas, is still coming off as weird. The smoke effect is hit or miss. I like the way the concept of the ghosts and the ideas, but sometimes it just feels like it wasn't quite ready for prime time. But where I can call that hit or miss... We have this scene where this demonic entity has the witch up against a wall, and in the mirror we can see its hand clawing at her. And you know what? I honestly think I've seen better special effects on shows that are 10 years old, maybe 15 years old, than I saw there. It just was so fake. And the light effect for the, oh, demon go back when the skull vanished? Great concept! But... Weren't we doing better than this? I don't know. The piece de la resistance, though, was what I think of as the big climactic fight. So we've got the were-tiger out there, and the vampire and the chick that is, I'm guessing, just a trained assassin, super badass, have showed up to help our main characters, the witch and the psychic, and... The vampire decides he's going to wrestle him down. And it's such a high and well thought out concept. It's a good concept. He's a psychic vampire, not a blood drinking one. Well, I think he can do both. So he can just drain off all of the energy. And if push comes to shove, she's got a gun full of silver bullets. They are perfectly set up to do this. The problem is, is the tiger, that's a very real tiger, walking around on set... As soon as it leaps at our vampire, becomes a stuffed animal. <sighs> Again, with the special effects that just are not up to it. It's a great concept, though, so I'm definitely going to give that a 50-50. Now, there's also the thematic question. If you knew you might hurt someone, would you want someone to stop you? Would you want them to take the shot? We know the Rev told the assassin take the shot if you have to but she didn't and maybe for a good reason so that's my first question of the week to you if you were a werewolf were a cat whatever would you want your friend to take the shot or would you want them not to and then there's the main thrust of the story the entire concept of midnight i really really want to like this so i'm definitely going to give it another week's chance
the veil between the worlds is low, and the angel says, he's seen this before. Last time, there were demons that came through, and we just saw one, and now that one's still haunting our resident witch. So what do you think? Do you think that this is a show worth giving another shot to? Is there something here worth sal salvaging? In the comments below, talk up this series. And in the meantime, let me ask you to do a favor with a different horror story. Specifically, even if it means clicking off my video, I'd like you to go all take a quick look at this book. It's available on Amazon. There'll be a link in the description. Now I Lay Me Down to Sleep is a horror writer's anthology for the best of causes to help fight cancer in children. If you're still here, though, thanks for watching. Keep up the good work. But if you could shoot me a like and a share, I'd really appreciate it. I'm trying to build up a community here, and everything you do is a big help for that. And if you haven't already, subscribe to hear my thoughts on this and other stories, because next week we're going to get vampires, and I love me some vampires, and these are some interesting ones, being both psychic and blood. We'll see how that works out. Maybe I should do a whole thing. Maybe in October I'll do a thing on vampires this year. In the meantime, thank you for walking with me through the heart of the stories we tell.